Tristan, Harper, and Madison. talking to us about the acts of God in our times of problems and painful situations in our lives. God stays faithful to us, and we need to stay faithful to God. It is very important for you to keep reading your Bibles, B-I-B-L-E, and that stands for Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Let's sing a favorite now, the B-I-B-L-E. story. 
eyes help me see the love of Jesus, God's own Son, the B I B L E. The Bible tells us over and over how much Jesus loves us. Another favorite song would be Jesus Loves Me. This is a great song for all ages. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. To end our children's time, we have a Bible verse song, comforting things Jesus says to us in the Bible. Verse 1 is, come learn of me. Verse 2 is, love one another. And verse 3 is, be not afraid. So to close, let's sing this like a prayer. to look forward to February 14th, and that will be Young at Heart Sunday. Please join us, and we will be back here with lots of fun favorites. And remember, Jesus loves you, and we love you. Bye. Bye.
Good morning. I'm Morty Zimmerman, Church Council Chair here at Trinity, and I'd like to take a moment to say welcome to this time of worship. I need to let you know about a slight change this weekend. Pastor Ram started a new series last week called Acts of God, based on the life of Joseph. This week, however, Pastor Ram became ill and was not able to write the sermon for this week. So we're filling in with a previous sermon called, How to Listen to God. We do hope this message will bless you. Pastor Ron intends to be back next week and back to our study of Joseph of the Old Testament. In the meantime, please enjoy. Thank you. As we continue on in uh, our series, Vertical, all about prayer and uh, Trying to answer some important questions as the weeks go along. When Jackie asked why pray, I'm like, well, that's what I preached on two weeks ago. That was the first uh, sermon of the series and of the year, was why pray. Last week was all about, is it okay to pray for ourselves? And we talked about that, and uh, today we're going to talk about the hearing part of prayer, the receiving part of prayer. And sometimes we're not quite so good at this. We're good at talking, but not good at listening in the midst of conversation. So let's pray as we get into this time, and I'll uh, share with you a few things. And again, you've got that outline there in your bulletin. You can follow along with me as we go through today. Gracious God, thank you so much for this opportunity you've given to us during this time where we gather together as your people, and we uh, re really this is a celebration, Lord God, of your presence with us here. And so we thank you for that, but we pray for your wisdom that you would open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive all that you have for us today. We want to get better at prayer. That's one of my goals for the new year. Maybe it's some of the goals of others here today. But all of us know we need to improve in this area of prayer. So thank you for this message today. Lead us and guide us through it. Um, help me, Lord God, to hit the high points and to know what everybody needs to hear. And uh, just bless this time as only you can. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I don't know how you are at hearing. Some, some of us are better at hearing than others. Um, uh, when Gene was kind of uh, sharing the intro, I saw some elbows going already uh, in this place. And um, it seems like about once a week, Jane will say to me, I told you that three hours ago. And I'm sitting there going, you know, I just don't remember that. I don't think I ever heard that. And probably more than likely, I was distracted. So Rom needs to work on his hearing. And uh, probably many of us do, probably most of us men do, Mark, sorry. We need to work on our hearing. And I think God's going to help us with some of that, especially the hearing that comes um, in the relationship called prayer. You know, it, it, hearing well helps us in our earthly relationships, but it also helps us in our vertical relationship and our relationship with God. One of the things my folks used to tell me when I was growing up, um, this had to do with God's creation, how God put us together, and I always thought it was pretty amazing as a kid, actually, that my parents knew this, but then, you know, that they passed this on to us. But they would always say this, and maybe, maybe you heard this too, They'd always say to us kids, God created you with two year ears and one mouth for a reason. And we never had to wonder what that reason was because it was in the midst of a you know, context where we understood exactly what they were talking about. Um, but it always amazed me that God, our creator, would create us the way he has with two ears and one mouth. And I think that was a hint. You know, we should listen twice as much as we talk. And I think the same is true in our relationship with God. Last week I talked about relationships with good friends. And folks, I'm telling you, if you're one who continues to monopolize the conversation and you do all the talking every time you get together with that friend, you may not be friends long. 
There needs to be a balance in those relationships. There needs to be both talking and listening from all parties. Everybody needs to have their chance to share. And the same is true in our relationship with God and with prayer. One observation I've noticed is this, is that many people, even in the church, they over-talk in their prayers. I don't know if you're guilty of this. I've been guilty of this, though. We over-talk when we're praying. Uh, sometimes we get, we get so excited or we're trying to get through this time or we know we're supposed to do it, so we're just trying to get through it or whatever, that we start praying and, and, and we'll say things like, God, if you just tell me what to do, you know, if you just show me your will, I'm, I'm going to certainly do that. And, and then we just keep going. God, God, you're so good. You have been good to me in the past. And so I really want to do your will. Um, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. In Jesus' name, amen, we get up and we run away. And that's the end of it. And then we wonder why we haven't heard from God. Why do you think? We don't take time to listen, do we? I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'll talk about that in a little bit here. But, but I'm, I'm just talking about God speaking to our hearts or speaking to us through his word. It takes a little bit of time, and it takes dedicated time uh, to do that. Folks, remember, prayer is communicating with God. That's the subtitle of this series. We're communicating with God. If effective communication is both uh, kind of a, a, a give and a receive process. It's talking and it's listening. It's both. And sometimes we need to give. Like last week we talked about it's okay to pray for yourself. And so we need to share with God what's on our heart and so forth. But then there's other times where we need to receive. So what is receiving all about? How do we do that in our prayer life? And so I want to go to our main scripture for today. And you guys all know this scripture. I don't know if you know the whole thing. You know the first part. But I want to share in this together. Would you please read with me from Psalm 46.10? Please read this with me. It's up on the screen right now. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. So that's the whole verse. We're going to concentrate on the first part of that. Be still and know that I am God. Folks, this one verse has so many important truths about how God wants to speak to us and also why God wants to speak to us. Both of those things are contained in this one verse. The reason God wants to speak to us is this, so that we can know God better. Because the more we get to know God, the more we can be like his son Jesus, and that's our goal of the Christian life, really, isn't it? To become more and more Christ-like. Be still and know that I am God. And so the reason God wants us to hear him is, is so that we can get to know him better. If you want to know what, what prayer is not about, that's what prayer is about. If you want to know what prayer is not about, it, it's not about God getting to know you. Now you may think, well, that doesn't sound very nice. You know, I think God should get to know me. But, but remember who your creator is. God is one who already knows you better than you know yourself. So prayer is not for God's sake. Prayer is for your sake. Prayer is really about you coming to know God better. And there's other reasons too. I could give you a couple other reasons for, for wanting to know God better and wanting to hear God in prayer. Knowing God better, for one thing, draws you into a lifestyle that Jesus calls the abundant life. It's a life of significance and a life of fulfillment. Who doesn't want to live a life like that? You know, we want our lives to count for something and to know that. And so it leads us into that. Knowing God better, folks, I dare say this also. Getting to know God better and hearing from God causes the peaks of your life to be higher, even higher. You'll be more excited about life, and you'll also have more strength to go through those inevitable valleys of life that we all go through. And so we come out good in this. All, all this comes to you by knowing God better. But we must learn to listen to God. Now, some of you have been doing this. You can't tell me you haven't because I know how people pray and how they think. But some of you have been waiting for that Charlton Heston voice to come through to you, you know, or that James Earl Jones voice, you know, one of those, whatever, whatever. That's, that's what we think God sounds like, and so that's what we're waiting for. Now, I hate to tell you this, but that rarely happens. Never happened in my life. I'm not even sure I know somebody who's heard from James Earl Jones, you know, in time of prayer or whatever. But, uh, but sometimes that's what we wait for. But today instead, what I want to do is show you other ways that God speaks to you. Other ways that God speaks to you and give you some steps to help you be a better listener. 
in prayer. So you got that outline there in your bulletin again. I'm going to dive right in. If I don't cover everything this morning, you can go online and pull a copy off of there because the sermon will be up. The full sermon will be online. But here's the first thing, and I've mentioned this before, but how do we become better listeners? Spend time with God daily. How in the world do we get to know somebody if we don't spend time with them? So spend time with God daily. How often? Was that one of the questions you asked, Jackie? I think it was. Anyway, daily is the answer, you know. Uh, You can pray anytime, but pray daily is what I would tell you today. Um, Here's what I know about most church people today, because I know church people better than I know anybody, because that's who I hang out with. But I, I know this about church people. The single greatest reason many don't hear from God is this. We simply don't make time to hear God. We don't make time for prayer this way. And the scenario usually goes like this. We fail to make time for God to speak to us, to listen to God, and then we get mad at God when he doesn't speak to us. Well, God, why haven't I heard from you? You know, and I wonder if God, I'm sure God wouldn't do this, but I wonder if God doesn't get a little impatient with us at times. And I'm wondering if God wasn't, you know, if he wouldn't at least think this way, you know, if you'll just slow down long enough, you know, and he would speak to us. If you'll just take a moment and catch your breath, you know, I'll speak into your life. I'll give you guidance. I'll give you assurance. I'll give you insights. I'll give your life direction. But you have to slow down long enough for me to speak to you and for you to listen. Folks, when we don't hear God, it's usually because our lives are overly busy. So what do we have to do? We need to schedule time with God. I tell people, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't happen. So that has to be on my calendar too. But you have to schedule time with God. It's that important. It's as important as going to the dentist and much more fun, let me tell you. You know, but you need to schedule it. You need to put it on your calendar. Psalm 143.8 kind of gives us an idea of when the best time is to meet with God. And it says this, let me hear, the psalmist says, let me hear of your unfailing love each morning. Oh, for you people who are not morning people, I'm sorry. But it's so important to get God time in before the busyness of the day takes over because it'll eat up your day and then you're going to go, oh, I missed God today. You know, it happens all the time. So morning, uh, for I am trusting you, the psalmist says, show me where to walk for I give myself to you. And this should be our attitude each and every day as well. Folks, it's been said, just an old saying, that the first hour of the day is like the rudder of a ship. You ever heard that before? But it determines where you go. It determines how your day comes out. It's no wonder the Bible says over and over again, begin your day with God. It's not really a matter of being a morning person. It's not a matter of being a night person. It's a matter of being a God person. How important is your eternal relationship with God? Are you a God person? Are you willing to seek God out daily? Scriptures guide us on this by Jesus' own example in Mark chapter 1. It says this, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. There's Jesus' habit of meeting God daily. What is your habit of meeting God daily? What's mine? I'm asking these same questions of myself as I try to improve in this area of my life. In John 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep, those who are following him, listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. We at least need to talk to God and listen to God enough to know that it's God's voice when we hear something. If we feel the nudge of God's spirit or whatever, is that of God or isn't it? We should recognize God's voice. And so spend time with God daily, whether it's reading or studying or praying, probably all three. And then secondly, you have to do this. And there's a connection here. Thank God for what you have. Did you know a thankful heart has everything to do if we can hear God or not? There's a connection there. I don't know if you realize this or not, but I want to share this with you. Many of you have an understanding of the idea of counting your blessings, so I don't don't have to get into that too much. But there's a definite connection between our spiritual ears and our heart. In, In other words, if you want to learn to hear God, you have to get your heart right. You have to be tuned in, is what I'm saying. Anybody here like languages? I just love the English language, and I love, this is really a play on words here. Did you realize that heart and hear are that close? There's only one letter difference, isn't there? And I've always been taught this. Let that T stand for thanksgiving. Let that T stand for thanksgiving, and then you will hear. You will hear from God. 
Offering thanksgivings up to God, folks, prepares our hearts in such a way that we can hear from God. Here's what it says in Psalm 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The imagery here, of course, is that of royalty. That uh, uh, God is royalty and we, as we're thankful for everything in our lives, we get to enter into his throne room, into his courts when we're thankful. When we're thankful, we're mysteriously, and I would say supernaturally, carried into the presence of God. There's something about a thankful heart tuning into God and connecting with God um, that there's just nothing else like it. So be thankful for something God has done for you today and amazing things are gonna happen in your prayer life, in your spiritual life. You will learn to hear God. Here's the third thing I wanna share with you today. Man, I'm buzzing through this today, but listen to this. The I is for this, investigate. Investigate the ways God speaks to me. God speaks to all of us in a variety of ways. Uh, Scripture even talks about that, that God speaks to us in a variety of ways. We should recognize God's presence through a variety of ways and so forth. And so the I is for investigate. The more we know about how God speaks to us, the more we're going to be able to tune in. Our sound system here at Trinity is uh, a pretty decent sound system. I I think you can hear me most of the time. Uh, But I'm not using this microphone, which is wired. I very seldom use this microphone. I use this one, which is actually a better microphone. And you can hear me better, but it's wireless. So most of our microphones here that we use regularly are wireless. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, it's much handier than dragging cords around and things like that. But the problem with that is, is it runs off of radio waves. Radio waves. Do you know that here in this room right now, there are tons of radio waves? Not to freak anybody out, all right? They're all around us. They're radio waves. We can't see them, we can't touch them, we can't feel them, but we know they're here. If you have an instrument that'll tune into it, it's called a radio, but if you have an instrument that'll tune into those radio waves, you can pick up all kinds of things like country and rock and roll and and classical music and all sorts of things, as well as truckers on the highway. I had one church we were at before that had a terrible sound system. Every Sunday morning, right in the middle of my sermon, breaker, breaker, you know, it would just come in and and I'd have to pause and then go back and it just kind of got to be a normal thing. Uh, I think it was a Radio Shack system or something like that. But anyway, but those truckers, the highway was right outside the church. It would come right in. So that's one of the drawbacks. But, um, but the amazing thing is that when we're tuned in, we can hear clearly over those radio waves. I think you're hearing me clearly this morning, so this is working properly. But I want to say so it is with God. When you investigate the ways that God speaks to people and know all the different ways, then you can tune in and you can listen and and you can hear from God. Listen to this from Romans chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, and this is Paul talking here. He said, They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. We're talking about creation here. They can can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. It's almost intuitive for those of us who who recognize God, who follow God. And God has made himself uh, obvious in a variety of ways. Anybody here like to camp, camping or the out of doors or whatever? Some of you do. You know, a lot of people like sitting out at a bonfire or something in their yard even, you know, that's out of doors. Or you like taking walks or hikes in the woods um, Jackie, I know all those things are you, so, you know. Uh, but we like to do that. We, we love the out of doors and so forth. And I think nature is one of the most profound ways that God speaks to us and lets us know that he's, I don't think you can be out in nature for two minutes and not recognize that there's a creator here. Somebody did good, you know. And, and so we recognize God there. We hear from God through people. I'm just going to touch on these things, other than your pastor, I'm talking. But we hear God through friends, through family, and so forth. We, we hear God through music. Pam, thank you for anthem after anthem after anthem that speaks to our hearts, because that's what music does. And it's a powerful medium for God to speak to us. Or, or movies. I'm just going to throw this one in. If you haven't seen a Christian movie in the last few years, well, they've gone from B-type movies up to A-plus type movies. I mean, they've really improved. And they will move your heart There's a variety of ways that God speaks to us. So one question that often comes up is this. How do you know it's God speaking to you? You know, if you feel nudged in a certain way, how do you know it's God speaking to you? And here's my answer. God will never contradict himself. If you know the word of God 
what you're feeling, what you're sensing, God is speaking to your heart. You write something down during a time of prayer. It shouldn't ever contradict God's word. If it does, it's probably not from God. It might have been whatever you ate last night or whatever, you know, something. But you hear what I'm saying? God will not contradict himself. God will not contradict himself. Here's what God's word does for us. Would you please read this with me? One of my favorite verses. This is from, uh, yeah, Psalm 119. Let's read it together. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Folks, when God speaks to you, if it's God, it will not contradict his word. Scripture always enlightens our life, enlightens our life. So that's what it should do. Here's number four. This may be the hardest one of the whole list today too, by the way. Leave the noise behind. Isn't that hard to do in this world that we live in? We get so busy and there's always things going on around us. And and Samantha, I'm telling you, when you have kids, it it really gets hard. You know, you have to fight for that quiet time. When they're taking a nap, you can get something else. You know, that's about, you already know that. But, but, uh, but it gets harder and harder and harder. But we need to leave the noise behind, those distractions. Um, anybody who knows health knows this, that, that not having any downtime is, is unhealthy for you. you. Everybody needs some downtime or some time off or whatever. Besides that, the busyness of life can be a real barrier to hearing from God. That can be a real barrier to hearing from God. In, in my family, and I, I think we all learned it from the movie Up. Anybody remember that movie Up from several years ago? But anyway, if somebody's distracted, um, somebody in the family, you know, if you're trying to have a conversation, somebody's on their cell phone, you know, I can't imagine that, but that happens. Anyway, um, you know, somebody else will yell, squirrel, you know, and, oh, there's my squirrel, all right. Uh, But, you know, it's a distraction. It's kind of like taking your dog out for a walk, you know, and you're trying to keep that dog on the sidewalk, and you're trying to keep their attention and where you're going and all that, and all of a sudden a squirrel pops out from behind a tree. It's all over, isn't it? It's all over. That dog is distracted. That dog is off on another direction. And that's kind of like us sometimes. And folks, technology is terrible for this. We're sitting over at the house here. My family was here for Christmas, and one time we were supposed to be watching a Christmas movie together. At one time I looked up from my chair, and I was on my phone, but I looked up, everybody else was on their phone. Nobody was watching the movie together. We don't even do that. I think we should have a phone bin where we put all the phones so we can watch a movie or something. But we have these distractions. But you know what? Jesus didn't have technology, but even people in situations can be distracting sometimes. And so even Jesus had distractions, and he had to deal with this and find ways to leave the noise behind. So in Mark chapter 6, beginning with verse 31, Jesus begins to explain some of what he and the disciples went through. And then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and let's rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. And folks, seriously, we need to learn to do the same. We need to learn to do the same in our lives if we truly want to hear from God. It's called the practice of solitude. If you want a technical term, that's what it's called. It's called the practice of solitude. But we must learn to leave the noise behind. And finally, I'm going to end with this. We have to learn to say yes before God speaks. This whole prayer thing is a thing of faith. It has a lot of faith behind me. If it's working the way it's supposed to work, it's an act of faith, this whole prayer thing. And so I want to share some things with you. I'm going to share with you about a time that Jane and I had to say yes. We said we didn't have to, but we did. We learned to say yes before we even prayed. And so we prayed this kind of prayer that said, yes, God, we're going to believe whatever you tell us in this time of prayer. Yes, God, we're going to accept whatever answers to prayer we have to these prayers and so forth. I was about 30 years old. I was 29 years old. And this was the second time God called me into the ministry. And this time I did say yes. I said no at 18 and then fought God for 10 years. And let me tell you, don't do that. It's a waste of time. God will win every time. But at 29 years old, Jane and I were trying to figure out the details of this. Okay, God's called us to the ministry. What do we need to do? We've got two kids now. You know, we need to sell our place. We need to move to Kentucky so I can go to school. Uh, You need to have a job. I was the employable one at the time, and and, uh, Jane figured maybe she'll pick up some part-time work, which she did. But we went down to Kentucky, just the two of us. We left the two kids with my parents, the grandparents. We went down to Wilmore, Kentucky, just south of Lexington, where Asbury College was, and I knew that's where God wanted me to go. There was just no doubt about it. And we went and we talked to people, and it was in the spring. And um, 
you know, with a family, you got details to take care of. I had to know about the schooling, so we had to check out the school. But I had one kid in grade school. He was already in kindergarten. He was a kindergarten transfer. But anyway, but he was already in school. So we're, what school was our kids going to go to? What's that all about? Jane had to know for her to be comfortable with this. And then, folks, we had to have a job. I had to have a job. I know I was going to go to school full time, but I had to have a job, too, to get us through this. We could probably do without insurance. We knew a, a lot of non-traditional students that were going back to school and skipping the insurance thing. We were young and healthy and could probably do this. We're going to trust God for that too. So here's what we did. We drove down to Kentucky. We got a room at the guest house at the college, at Asbury College, like a little hotel there on campus. We went to our room, we unpacked, and we both got on our knees and we began to pray like we had never prayed before together. And we talked about this before we started praying, and we said, you know what? We need to agree with God. Whatever God wants to do in this, we need to agree with God in this so that this prayer can be a powerful time of God, you know, shifting things, doing whatever, so that we're provided for, so that we can get this done. How in the world are we going to get all this done? It seemed impossible at the time. But we knelt there in that room, and we began to pray for two things. Number one, I was auditioning for the music department at this college because that's the only major I'd ever had in school, and that's all I knew. And I hadn't sang seriously in 10 years. So this was scary. It seemed impossible. We began to pray for that audition at the college the very next day. After that audition was out of the way, I had to go look for work. And so we began to pray, and we began to thank God for helping me pass that audition. We began to thank God for the job he was going to give us that would provide for the family and take care of all of us while I went to school and prepared for the ministry. Long story short, I passed the audition with flying colors. I passed the audition with flying colors after 10 years. Now, it doesn't say a semester later I wasn't a Bible and theology major, but that's another whole story. I'll share that with you later. But the second thing was this. The second place I walked into, I have no idea. This had to be God's timing. Why do you go for an interview and look for somebody to interview with at noon? During the lunch hour? You don't do that. The first place I went to, no, everybody's out to lunch. Okay, fine. So I went around the corner to a company called Airborne Express. Maybe some of you remember that. And I walked in, and folks, this was God's timing. Jane was sitting in the car praying. She was still praying. She's always been my prayer warrior. But I walked into this place, and I walked up to the counter as bold as can be, and I said, here's who I am, and here's what I've been doing for the last 12 years, working for some of their competitors. And I said, I'm moving my family here to go back to school, to go into ministry, and I need a job that'll help us out. And the girl kind of looked at me, and she goes, let me go tell the boss. And she went around the corner into this office. And I ever, He comes out with a job application, drops it down. Little did I know, the day before, they had just landed the IBM account. That's Lexington, Kentucky, IBM City. They had just landed the full account for all air freight and all air express. They had landed that account. And John comes out, and he says, my future boss, and he says, I need help, and I need help now. He says, you've been a supervisor? I said, yeah, I've ran offices, whatever. I've done all that, you know, great. He said, fill this out and get it back to me, and then we're going to talk. Before an hour was up, we were walking out to the car where Jane was, and I had her roll down the window, and I said, Jane, meet my new boss. And I said, oh, by the way, he understands our situation, and we get full insurance with this job. He's making it possible, and he pulled some strings and did some things. Folks, that's how God answers prayer. If you will just say yes first... You have to enter into prayer with faith. You have to say yes. I don't even know where I am in my notes. Does it matter? So I'm I'm reminded of a, a passage in Isaiah. And as I look back on that time and how God answered prayer, this became real to me. Isaiah 55, beginning with verse 8, says this, My thoughts, God says through Isaiah, are nothing like your thoughts says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Folks, those who aren't believers would not understand this. But in faith, know that when you say yes to God first, you will hear from God. You will hear from God. Do you want to hear from God today? Do you want to? Remember, prayer is about both giving and receiving. But we have to get this second part of prayer right, this other part of prayer, the part that's listening. We have to set ourselves up. We have to tune ourselves in. We have to be ready. These five steps will help, but we have to be ready. Here's how we hear from God. 
Folks, our last verse today is Romans 8, 28. Let's take a look at this for just a minute. It goes like this. Paul is writing. He says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. My life, folks, and Jane's life is a testimony to this scripture that it is true. You can trust God. You can count on God in your life, but you have to learn this other part of prayer. We have to learn to listen to. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you so much for this day, and thank you for this message that, uh, well, I never dreamt I would preach a message like this that's on the listening part of prayer, but it's so important. This is so important, Lord God. Help us to be better listeners, not only in our earthly relationships, because that matters too, but also in our vertical relationships, our heavenly relationships with you. Lord God, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for letting us know today what it is about and what it's not about. Thank you, Lord God, for wanting to walk closely with us. Help us now to desire to walk closely with you too. We pray all this today in Jesus' name.